Hi everyone, can you hear me? Is everyone here? I hope you're here. Tell me if you can hear me. Um, I had my amazing Susie behind the scenes helping me. It was so great. Oh, good. You can hear me. It's awesome. I am so excited because today I'm going to give you guys, um, well, it's a goal for me to give you guys a real breakthrough around the meaning of the nodes. And I've got my incredible Susie and my incredible Stacy here. Hi, Stacy. I'm so glad you're here. And, um, Okay, great. So they're going to help you answer some questions as we go. Oh, good. I'm so glad that you hear me and all oh, that's good. Um, but I really want to give you guys a breakthrough. Now, here's what I want to tell you. There is something really extraordinary going on with this community. And what I've noticed is you guys really come here for like the real, you know, the deep, the real. And um, I love that. And I can tell by your comments, I can tell by the kinds of charts that you order and the um, the emails that I've gotten. And I can see that you guys are actually really, really wanting to learn. So what's cool about that is today's a little bit advanced. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a new twist or a deeper look at the North Node. Now, listen, this is like unraveling a ball of yarn, because if I was to really talk about the North Node, I would also have to talk about the South Node. I would have to talk about the sign your North Node is in, the sign your South Node that's in, and then all the aspects that touch between the two. But we're not going to do that today, because just looking at your North Node um, and just looking at the sign that it's in and the house that it's in if you know your birth time tells me about the karmic contract you made for this lifetime what this lifetime is about and um i love seeing everybody here i just have to say hi jan and hi karen and hi dawn i'm so glad dawn is here if you guys haven't um already gotten one of your gorgeous crystal necklaces from Soul Navigation. We have only a few left, so go check them out at my store and um, get yours before they're completely gone. They are just, they're exclusively made for Soul Navigation, and we only have a few left. And so if you want one, go grab one. Um, that reminded me, because Dawn's here. Mm. So this is the first thing that I want to tell you. We're not going to talk about the South Node. But the North Node and the South Node do dance together, and that's called the nodal axis. And you do want to know about your North and your South Node, but today we only have time to really talk about the North Node, okay? So let me just go into it a little bit, and then I'm going to give you kind of a new way to look at it. And you guys know that I love Jan's work. Everybody loves Jan's work. She's really extensive. But I've also broadened my knowledge beyond Jan's work. Um, Astrology for the Soul, you know, she's my favorite. I've had a reading from her. I just adore her. But um, I, I want to talk to you about the North Node without, without looking at it in its entirety in your chart. But if you want to know about your entire karmic contract, your past life, your next lifetime, and what you're here to learn in this lifetime, you probably need to book a one hour or a 90 minute reading because it is a big story. Um, now, I'm going to give you just a couple basics that I know you already know, but the North Node is the exact opposite sign and degree of your South Node. And it 
sort of illuminates your trail. It's the trail that your soul has incarnated to blaze. And the North Node is like your beacon. It is like your North Star. I often give the metaphor that if you're out in a raft in the middle of the ocean and you see a blinking light, like a lighthouse, that's your North Node. Your North Node will call for you. Not everybody will do their North Node well, especially if you have no planets in next to or in relationship to your North Node. Your North Node is going to feel like you are climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. And um, eventually you will come to feel very fulfilled by your North Node, but not immediately. Um, when you first encounter your North Node, it's awkward, it's weird, it's bizarre, it's uncomfortable because you probably don't know how to do it. So um, oftentimes we find our comfort zone in our South Node, but we're here to learn this. Now, I have found that we usually do not come into our North Node until we're about 36 years old. And that is your second nodal return. So you have a nodal return between 18 and 19 years old. So think about that. When you were 18 or 19 years old, the node in by transit in the sky came back around to where your node is. And that is a destiny moment. That is a fate line. So if you're having a nodal return right now, you are either 18 or 19 or you're 36, 37 or you're, you're 37 plus 18. What's that? <laughs> 37, 47, <laughs> like my age. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, you're about 56 years old, 57 years old. Um, yeah, 55 years old. Um, that's that's about right. So those are fate years. Those are destiny years. And the seeds that you plant when you have a nodal access return are so critical because they grow your foundation for the next 18 years. Now, I also want you to know that you could, if you if you have a child at 18 or 36, that, that little child is going to have your same nodal access. So they're going to have your same karmic story. Or if you marry somebody who's 18 years older than you, you'll have the same story. Um, if you marry somebody who's like nine years older than you, you will be, um, you'll be a reverse nodes. So if they're south node in Gemini, you would be north node in Gemini. And that's sort of like two ships crossing in the night. So I want you to think about those years. So at 18 or 19, you have your nodal return. And at 36 or 37, you have your nodal return, your second one. And then at 55, you have your third one. Now, I think it's that second one where we really find our North Node. Uh, the first time around at 18, you might get a taste of it, but you will probably be far from mastering it. Now, what's interesting is um, I wanna talk about, I wanna talk about, and then I'm gonna take your questions later. And if you guys wanna super chat me, I'm accepting super chats for sure. Um, and I'll take a deeper look um, at your at your questions. But I hope you guys all have your gorgeous charts. Let me just pull this up for you. I make your charts. I hope you can see. I don't know if you can see. I hope you can. Let me see. Can you see? I hope you guys have your charts. The, this is the gorgeous natal charts that I make for you. And if you don't have a gorgeous natal chart, from me, you should go to soulnavigation.com, click on the shop tab and go get a natal chart because it's so easy to read. And I put everything in the boxes. So if you can't see, if you can't see the, um, um, if you can't read the circle, if you don't know how, you can just read the boxes. And I also started putting in the declination so you can know if you have an out of bounds planet or not, because I'm really getting into out of bounds planets and I'm going to do a live on out of bounds. Um, so 
Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk to you about your North Node in a tiny bit more detail. So the North Node, depending on the sign and the house that it's in, is going to tell me a lot about your karmic contract. Now, it's going to tell me sort of how your soul wants to evolve, how it wants to grow, what subject manner, matter, what subject does it want to sing its song about, um, what arena in life is it trying to master or even dabble with. Again, you're not going to be great at your North Node. You might not even like your North Node. You might be like, ooh, I'm supposed to do that, right? But it is where the doors and the opportunities seek you and call for you. It is the poetry that wants to be written by your soul. And it is the space or the place or the arena where you will have a chance to really um, evolve, learn, grow, stretch, conquer, and you may not before the age of 36 even see it or have any awareness about it. Now, this is what I love about astrology. Had I known about my North Node when I was a little girl, I probably would have become curious about it and I would have grown that part of me up faster, quicker, and more wisely. So I didn't know about North Node. So I want to know who's my youngest person here today. I mean, I actually had somebody who was 17 years old ordered their chart from me today. And I was just like, oh my God, I love you. So is there anybody here 17 years old or younger? I mean, God bless you. And who are you that you want to learn that much about astrology? I love it. I am such a better human being on the planet because of astrology. And uh, I'm a better daughter. I'm a better mother. I'm a better friend. Um, I really embrace the art of forgiveness. I don't hold grudges. Um, and astrology allows for so much acceptance. Oh my gosh. He res your, <laughs> he res your cheese, sir. I am 15 years old. Are you really, is that really honest to God? True. Everybody, will you please leave he res your cheese, sir. <laughs> a little heart, a love, a thumbs up, an angel, a smiley face emoji, please. 15 years old. Do you know? Do you know how spectacular you are to be 15 and studying astrology for the soul on a deep channel? You're not just watching memes. You're not just watching the guy with the diaper on his head do, you know, pretend for forecasts like wow you know oh my god please give give that sweetheart some love and brendan is 18 that's pretty young too especially for a guy don't want to be sexist just saying um a lot of a lot of young men are not interested in the psychology of the soul you know this young so like kudos to you and what incredible human beings um, you guys are going to be. Had I worked on my North Node at 15 years old, God, what I could have done, right? Um, my North Node sits all by itself with no support in the chart at all. It's like lonely on an island. And so it's very foreign. And it's, it's hard for me to do. It's hard for me to do at 54 years old. So... Um, that's beautiful, and I hope you learn a lot. So we're going to go through the signs, okay? We're going to go through the nodal, the nodal access. Um, yeah, you guys, you you young kids are like old souls just to be on this channel. And one thing I love about this community is this is a deeper community. Like you guys really, really want to learn, and I love it. So I'm going to talk about. First of all, I'm going to talk about just the signs, okay? Um, and mm -hmm. I love it. Oh, and Amira Tuvshin Tugs, Tuvshin Tugs is 18 as well. I love having you young people. And I work with a lot of young people, by the way. 
Um, I've probably given over 200 readings to people 13 to 18. And on some, some teenagers, like 18 and 19 and 20 year olds, I worked with them on even a weekly basis. And it really helped them. And Anna's 21 and 26. Yeah, a lot of young people. So you guys are really in it. Uh, Amira, Mongolian name. I love it. I love it. Yes, I, I, I wish there were more human beings like them too. I don't know if Alexander meant that for me or for them, but I mean for them. Oh, you guys are so stinking sweet. So anyways, let's talk about this. So if you have an Aries North Node, um, and if you have your North Node in the first house, um, it's going to take on an Aryan flavor. So if you, I'm going to talk about this as if, um, first I'm going to go through, why don't I just go through the signs first and then I'll do the houses. Um, so if you have an Aries North Node, you know, what I want to tell you is that, well, how about this before I start? A lot of astrologers on YouTube and even a little bit in Jan's book speak about the South Node as something to get rid of, something to slough off, something to step away from, something to remove from your life. And I don't believe that's true. After studying with Stephen and Robert Hand and Rick Levine and um, Sue Tompkins and on and on, the list goes on, Laura Nalbandian, um, and even Jan, I feel like there needs to be a new concept about the nodes. And, in, uh, and when you're watching those other YouTube channels where they all say in a very cliche way, uh, the North node is the thing that no longer serves us or we don't need or we're trying to um, strip away from our lives, it's not true. It's more like where you got your PhD, where you have been evolved, where you have come from, the, the class that you have mastered. It is the gifts, the talents, the tools, the skill set that is so comfortable for you that you can do it in your sleep. Um, and I'm telling you, the work that I'm doing right now is my South Node. And if you told me I had to step away from it, I, I wouldn't know myself. So the South Node is very, very critical and it's important to know. Hold on to the more evolved side of your South Node, but do not operate in the lower octaves in the sinisterness of your South Node. So just like human beings evolve, for example, um, a lot of people believed, uh, a lot of people believed that if you were not like me, you are wrong. So if I'm, if I'm, um, well, I don't know, in 19, how about 1941? If, if I'm German and Aryan and you're not, then you're wrong and I'm right. And much of the world operated this way and much of the world still operates this way. But the evolved human beings know that if you're different from me, way different from me, you're okay and I'm okay. And differences are to be embraced, right? That's evolved thinking. Well, that's what I want you to do with the notes. If I can give you any gift today, I want you to do evolved thinking. And I don't want you to think, don't do your north, don't do your south node. Your south node is bad. Your south node is horrible. That's simply not true. Now, when it comes to synastry and composite charts, so relationships, is it is it wise for you to marry your South Node? Mm, probably not. But if they are super healthy and if it's supported in your entire chart, it can work out. Would it probably be healthier for you to marry your North Node? Yes. The North Node is where you're headed. The South Node is where you came from. But just like your parents, you don't need to throw your parents away, even though you're going to probably outgrow them, right? But it's nice to visit them, and they gave you some good things. So just like we've evolved, where we can appreciate, at least on this channel, because um, I know your hearts of gold, I read every comment, and this channel is very, I mean, the subscribers I have on this channel are wise souls. You guys are stepping into the fifth dimension. You guys are evolving. You guys are on your way to enlightenment. So 
thinking like that, your south node hold on tight to the beautiful things it gives you but be willing to grow beyond them. Just like you're not going to live at your parents' house for your whole life long, right? Just like I don't have to be exactly like you to be of value to society, right? I don't have to have your religion. I don't have to have your skin color. I don't have to have your same sexual preference. I don't have to, right? So what, what I'm saying is, is you're going to outgrow your south node, but your south node is not some dirty, bad thing. Okay, am I making sense? So I also don't want you to stay stuck in your South Node, though, because that would be like staying stuck at your parents' house, never getting a job, staying in your childhood bedroom, right? And, and you won't evolve. So keep the high side of your South Node. Don't dip down into the ugly, gory parts of your South Node, because that's probably one of the uglier places of you, the, the lower octave of your south node is probably one of the uglier parts of you. It's the unevolved part of you. You want to stay vibrating high. Okay, I just want to read your comments. Yeah, Jesse, Jess Jazzy says, yes, I agree with you 100%. My south node is where I'm a master with. It's true. It is literally where you got your PhD in your last lifetime. So you, you need to consider your South Node as a true gift that you received from the hard work that you put into your, to your uh, life, to your last incarnation. Now, I can read your nodal story. And if you get a reading with somebody at Soul Navigation, anybody, they can read your story too. And if you want to understand sort of the treachery and the hardships that you went through in your past life, oh my gosh, go over to soulnavigation.com and book a reading. You probably need 90 minutes though, because it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, <laughs> I love Susie. Yeah, run forest. Um, dating your South Node is not usually... <laughs> Um, the best thing, they are a soulmate, but it's like you've been there, done that. You're going to outgrow them just like you're going to outgrow your parents. You're going to probably mommy them. Um, yeah, so Amira says, my south node is in Scorpio. Is that why I love astrology, tarot, etc.? That's why you like the occult. That's why you like to understand the code like a detective like you know um um a combination code you like to crack the code open to understand the psychology of people using divination through the occult so yes that is very true um second house stellium let's go okay so amanda davis needs help Susie or stacy if you can help them find their south south node um the south node is directly opposite to the north node so let's talk about aries okay if you have an aries we'll go in order if you have an aries um north node the the gift that you have in life is that you were you know a diplomatic uh people person and pleaser and in this lifetime you will be <laughs> you will be given very difficult challenges to undertake you will be given mountains to climb only to climb the next mountain only to climb the next mountain only to sort of feel never satisfied with the mountain you just climbed and so you're here to really create um you're you're here I, the, the evolutionary intention of this person is to find the leader in you is to find um the courage to take risks and to blaze new trails now here's what the truth is and anybody who has an aries north node i want you to comment right now and let me know if you can relate to this but one of the things that you can be sure about that's going to happen is and it's it's cool to know every important person in your life's north node so if you can figure that out right now like do you is your mom an aries north node is your dad an aries north node because that is going to tell you so much about how you were raised is your child an aries north node is your brother your sister your partner um so 
you're here to be first at something very important in your tribe, in your family. So you are here to blaze the trail. You have the pioneering spirit. You have the rocket fuel. Now, you might not know this until you are about 36 years old. You might not know how strong you are. If you're 18 and you know this, awesome. But there's a fire burning so bright inside of you that you really came to conquer. You came to become number one. You came to not mess around. Now, you might even have to learn ferocity, resilience, tenacity, and independence. And I know I have a lot of people on here that don't speak English as a first language because I love my international my, my international community. But tell me if you don't understand those words. But you will become very competitive with yourself and with life, always wanting to improve and become the best. You will learn to become the master, the master creator of your own destiny, relying on no one. So tell me if you have a North Node in Aries and if you can relate to this. Um, so Jess, one of her kids has an Aries and North Node. So the best thing you can do is cultivate your kid's independence and not baby that child. Um, they... Those, those North Node and Aries have a hard time stepping into their North Node because they had a lifetime of dependency. And so cutting the umbilical cord and really learning how to fly, I mean, they honestly should jump out of airplanes with a parachute, of course. Um, Natalie from Argentina. Hi, I want to go to Argentina. I want to travel everywhere. Um, so... Do I have anybody with an Aries North Node? Well, Patricia, you all you have to do is know their birthday and you can know their North Node. So you can put it in here or you can look it up. Um, Angelfish, yeah, she says it beautifully. Aries North Node is the warrior of their own destiny. And um and Meg, it doesn't matter if it's intercepted. It, it's an Aries North Node, no matter what, if it's intercepted or not. Um, so Meg, you're really here to like grab life, you know, and soak it up enormously and not be a follower in this lifetime. Aries North Node really has to learn how to lead the charge. They have to lead a company, lead a team, lead a band, lead, lead something. Um, they're born leaders and they need to get into their physical power and their, their instinctual power. These people need to really seek out massive opportunities, some that they're even afraid of, and conquer them. Taking risks is the name of the game and it is the ticket. It is the golden nugget. It is the tool taking risks on a daily basis. Taking risks is how you will evolve. You're not the pioneer. You're not the trailblazer. You're not the maverick if you take no risks. So you need to really step into your confidence and your power. And you're here in this lifetime to grow confidence. So what's going to happen to you? You are going to encounter situations over and over and over that seem impossible. You're going to encounter situations where people like stifle you, hold you back, or they don't want you to launch. You're going to encounter um, partnerships that lock you in and tie you down and not let you soar. You are going to encounter people who say, you can't do that. You're going to meet people who will take away your self-confidence. Why? Because Aries needs to break through all of that and conquer that mountain and take those risks. And those things would not be hard if you didn't have those challenges and obstacles in your way. So you're going to attract those obstacles. You're going to attract partners that want to own you, right? That create dependency out of you. Do I have anybody with a North Node in Aries that you can relate to? Um, I hope so.
Okay, let's go on to Taurus and North Node, but I want to know um, if there are any Aries North Nodes, if you can understand that. So let's look at Taurus North Node, and I have, I have some people here as examples. Um, wow. So this is going to probably shock you. I think a lot of people are going to say, oh, Taurus North, North Node people here are, are here to make a lot of money. And I'm going to tell you it's a lot deeper than that. And again, I love you guys because you like the deep. Um, oh, good. So I, okay, so you guys are saying, all these Aries people are saying, yes, yes, me, me. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, I relate to this. <laughs> Um, oh, good. My young person um, says yes. Okay, so here's Taurus North Node. So you're going to read and you're going to hear from all these other channels like, oh, you're here to, you know, learn about beauty and you're here to learn about, uh, you know, uh, self-worth and your self-esteem and um, make money, right? And um, learn about the senses, now, none of that's wrong. That is in the crock pot, but that is not uh, the deepest part of North Node in Taurus. Are you ready? So North Node in Taurus people, how do I say this? I guess I'm just going to lay it out on the line real harsh, okay? Because I know you can handle it because I know you have a South Node in Scorpio. North Node and Taurus people were so tortured in a previous lifetime that in truth, yes, you're supposed to learn self-esteem, but what sign isn't? Um, yes, you're supposed to learn how to manage money. Um, and yes, you're supposed to understand the art of beauty and the senses. But why, right? What is the point of all of that? The point of all of that is that you really are supposed to evolve beyond the gory, tormenting chaos that lives deep inside of you, the fears, and rise above and learn to see tranquility, serenity, beauty, peace, and fulfillment, complete fulfillment, in all things. So how do you do that? It's very, very deep. Um, Taurus North, North Node people basically have come here to find serenity. Now, hold on. Does What is this? Like, go deep with me for one second. Just give me a second. I'm, I'm doing this off my head. I'm not reading anything. So just go with me for one minute. Um, because this is such a deep placement. And it gets poo-pooed in the books that I read. And I, I don't like that. So I want to pay it's I want to pay this aspect its rightful tribute. So when you are happy, you are usually happy because you've come from a place of taking a risk. You've jumped into something and you have created happiness, which creates joy. Joy creates fulfillment. Fulfillment, when I feel fulfilled. Filled, I feel um, at peace. And when I am at peace, do you know what I have? I have tranquility. I have serenity. And when I am serene, do you know what I'm doing? I am surrendering. I'm not in the fight. I'm not an Aries North Node. I'm not in the fight. I'm not in the, the, the drama. I'm not in the chaos. I'm not in the jealousy. I'm not in the passion. I'm not in the I hate you. I'm not into the psychological warfare of life. I'm not trying to beat anyone. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. I've arrived. It's very Buddha. It is very, very Buddha, this placement. But do you have any idea of where you came from? So getting to this place of Buddha, serenity, surrender, and tranquility. Um, and it sounds a lot like Pisces, doesn't it? Now, I don't mean just in a spiritual sense of the Buddha. I mean in your life. 
I mean in doing the laundry and cooking dinner and showing up for your friend and taking a bath and loving your work. It's literally the fulfillment and the self-esteem and self-confidence and the self-worth you glean from being at peace. How do you be at peace? Through the senses, through smell, taste, touch, sight, hearing, right? Are you guys with me? This is very hard to do. So it's bringing the manic, the manic panic down to a sense of calm. Does anybody understand this? Um, I'll get to the houses after I do the signs, but yes, if you guys are listening uh, to this and you want to correlate, you know, Aries with the first house, Taurus with the second house, start thinking about it. So that's for one of my advanced comments, um, because this does represent uh, the arena in which you'll play in if you have your north node in a different sign in the second house. So that was crucial, Diablo. Um, and, and also, if you're a Taurus, that's the point of your soul, right? So if it's your North Node, uh, that's where you're headed to. And I guarantee you, you probably won't get this one until you're 36 years old. I would be shocked if you got this at 18, unless your North Node has a lot of support in it. Because where you came from, I'm just going to tell you, if you're a North Node in Taurus, where you came from was the bowels of hell. Yeah. And so for me to tell you to get calm, find serenity and surrender, it's so deep. It should almost make you cry because it is so impossible to do. Your North Node is hard. It's not like, oh, I'm going to go do my North Node. No. <laughs> So what's going to happen to you? You're going to find situations that force you into surrender. So imagine a situation like that where you just have to surrender, right? Not easy. You are going to be forced into serenity. Maybe, uh, maybe you get an illness or a sickness that has you lay in bed for a while, that has you immobile or not able to walk, right? Yeah, you'll get serene and you'll surrender. Why? Because you have to. Yeah. So do I have any North Node and Tauruses here that really can feel this in the core? Oh, Jennifer M says, what a beautiful description of Taurus North Node. My best friend has this and I watch her play this out as a part of her life. Thank you. Oh, Mikhail, Mikhail, love you, Meredith. It's so sweet. I feel like I will never get it right. Oh, April, do you have a North Node in Taurus? Uh, you will get it right. Um, I have Taurus, Taurus North Node. Okay, Sasha, I don't know how old you are, but this is a hard one to get. They're all hard, but this is a really, really hard one to get. Um, okay, so Alejandro wants me to do Sagittarius. Um, hold on, let me just write this down. So I did Aries, so I'll go out of order. Aries, because she gave me a super chat. Thank you. So I'll do Sag next. Um, and so Sag is really interesting. I'm just going to tell you. A Sag North Node, you're, you're having um, a nodal, you're, you're having a nodal um, access return right now, North Node and Sag. Um, hold on. Hold on. So... What I want to say about this is really interesting. Um, some examples that have this are David Copperfield, Fred Astaire, Whoopi Goldberg, Jim Hansen, um, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Um, let's see. Virginia Woolf, William Shakespeare. Isn't that interesting? Um I want to tell you that there's something very liberating about the North Node in Sagittarius. Um, what, I, what I want to say about North Node in Sagittarius is that there is kind of um, an obsessive, an obsessive compulsive energy to you 
where you also came from chaos. Now, the Taurus North Node person came from psychological chaos and drama and, and um, maybe cruelty. But with, with Sagittarius as your North Node, you had a Gemini type of chaos. So too much information, too much activity, too, <laughs> too many things to think about, too many options, too many opportunities, going in too many directions, and um, too, too uh, much overstimulation, overthinking, overreaching, overspending, overdoing, overtaxed, um, just exhausted, right? So in your last life, I think that your mind was mentally exhausted. Mm. In order to step into your higher self, you need to cultivate your Sagittarius aspect, which sort of eliminates the details and steps into a deeper belief system um, and deep intuition. Fire signs have deep intuition, um, cultivating gut instincts and getting away from maybe just the facts, ma'am, and seeing the broader picture, developing your highest mind, so developing a belief system rather than just connecting the dominoes, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, um, and understanding how to say A, how to say B, how to say C, understanding why do we have an alphabet and what is the alphabet good for and what is the use of the alphabet, right, without even knowing A, B, C, D, E, right? Um, or if you do know it, you use it for your higher purpose. So Sagittarius North Node really wants to expand their consciousness to a societal level, to understanding human behavior at a global level, stepping a little bit away from just factual living, right? Oh, you have blonde hair, blue eyes, you're five foot nine. Rather, I see you as a human. I see you as a product of your own culture and developing um, the ability to see truth from a larger perspective um, with a global lens. And in this lifetime, you will be encouraged or led to understanding the true meaning of life, the true meaning of human existence. So in this lifetime, you're in search for the Holy Grail. Now, uh, you're used to um, uh, uh, approaching that as um, uh, a real detail-oriented job where now you're being asked to see the big picture from the higher mind and to get out of small ball and hit the grand slam. It's the go big or go home. So dream bigger, think bigger, act bigger, talk bigger. Now, I don't mean braggadocious bigger. I mean speak in a way that is more... Um, that holds the attention of more people, more diverse people. Sagittarius is sort of a global, a, a global crusader in search of the truth of life. So um, the other thing is, is you're here to truly expand and grow your higher mind, your higher mind. So you really may need to do that through two ways. Travel, educating yourself through travel. You have to see the world. You have to know other cultures other than yourself. You have to go beyond your own neighborhood, your own country, your own language, your own look, your own style. You got to go way beyond that. So you're supposed to travel the world. That's one way to educate your higher mind. That's probably the fastest way. And the second way is to get a higher education, literally to become a PhD or an MD or a master's or whatever version version that is with whatever certification process at the highest level. And so I kind of want to say with Sagittarius, one of the goals in this lifetime to evolve your soul is to get really freaking smart. <laughs> get smart. 
don't be dumb. Not that you are, not that you are. I'm not saying that you are. And it's, it's probably highly unlikely that you're not, but you might have been doing education in the way of like a auto mechanic, which by the way, they're brilliant, but like in little tiny pieces where now you're supposed to put all the pieces together and you're supposed to create and live through hypothesis, right? The process of elimination through hypothesis. So, um, um, I just want to tell you that you, um, you're here to become a, a modern day philosopher, um, a modern, a modern day, um, uh, maybe guru even in search of the Holy Grail for life. So what's going to happen to you? You um, are going to, you're going to get stymied and you're going to get roadblocked. Getting a higher education might be something really hard to do. You might, it might not be practical. So guess what? <laughs> that's why it's hard. That's why it's your North Node and not maybe your Sun sign. Um, you are going to run into obstacles where people are going to challenge your belief systems. Guess why? Get Or, or hold you back because of your skin color or because of your race or because of your gender. Um, why? Because you're supposed to become a global citizen <laughs> that understands people from all different tribes, all different cultures. So you might be raised by a family that's quite primitive in their thinking um, or limited, limited in um, their belief system around education. So I had this um, client of mine who was Sagittarius Moon and she was a Cancer. Well, her parents are billionaires. They're billionaires. And she has a Sagittarius moon and she wanted to go to college. And you know what her dad said? Why do you want to do that? I already earned all the millions. What else could you even need? There's nothing that you could even need. Like I have everything for you. You don't need to go waste your time on a stupid college. Come run my business for me. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want your billions. I want my higher mind. So it's to grow the mind at the highest level. Um, okay. So, um, somebody said, hold on, somebody asked me for Libra. Hold on, hold on. Libra, I want to try to do this for you. So, wait one second. So this is very interesting with the North Node in Libra. Um, so I'm going to do Libra now. So I've done Aries, Taurus, Sag, and Libra. And then somebody sent me a super supporter chat. I mean, a super chat. North Node in Libra in the eighth house. And I was, and I was my South Node in Aries until eight or 19 years old and then I was kind of forced to change still in the process at 25 years old Alice and thank you for my five dollars super chat that's so sweet of you so I'm going to skip over here to Libra and um this is what I want to say about Libra you know Libra North Node people were were born kind of angry um about their circumstances or about life in general. Um, they were born with um, sort of being able to see, they, they, were, they were born with sort of being able to see what's wrong with the picture all the time. And um, and and so, they're really here to learn the art of diplomacy and the art of relationships. They were people who were extraordinarily um, independent, so much so that relationships probably were quite difficult for them to do. And so in this lifetime, they really are here to learn the art of diplomacy, the art of partnership, the art of um, collaboration, and even the art of love. Now, let me go deeper with this, okay? Because you're going to hear other people talking about, oh, you're here to get a marriage partner and live happily ever after. I guarantee you that that's probably going to be so freaking hard for you to do <laughs> that it's not about getting married, okay? So getting married is not 
the truth about Libra North Node. Yeah, that's one way you can do it, but that's not it. Like I did Taurus, let me go a little deeper for you. You are supposed to become so highly aware of what it means to have your heart, your body, your mind, and your soul able to depend and trust another person. Now, do you North Node and Libras feel me? That is so hard to do because they had to go at it alone. They had to completely go at it alone. Yeah, this is for the sun sign too. This is what Libra is all about. And so when you have this though as your North Node, this is where you're headed. If you are a, a Libra soul, you're, you're working on this stuff every day. Um, and so let's talk about what that looks like. Yeah, that, that could look like a marriage. That's one way to do it. That could look like a business partner. That could look like um, a best friend. And so this can, this, this can be so frightening. This would be like, I've never done psychedelics, but this would be like me picking someone to go do psychedelics with and then trusting them with my body, my mind, my soul, and my spirit, <laughs> which I don't even know if there is a human. I don't even know. Yeah, this is a Libra theme. So if you have a lot of Libra in your chart, you'll relate to this. Um, so I want to tell you something that Libra North Gnomes are kind, they can be kind of hard people in the sense of um, misunderstood. They usually um, give too much or give too little. They usually lose themselves completely or they don't lose themselves at all and they're walled up with cynicism. And the reason why is because they're trying to learn how to do it. And it's awkward. So at first I trust you too much. Then I don't trust you enough. Now I don't trust you at all. Now I completely surrender to you. You're my next person, right? And so they're learning the art, the art of, I might say love because it's ruled by love. Um, I have to put my lip gloss on for Libra. No, my lips are dry. Um, but it's really the art of co-creation. Like you and I together are going to bake this pie together, whatever this pie is. And I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you that deeply to reciprocate. Yeah. Are you Libra North nodes? Is there any Libra North node that's like really super good at this? Um, I mean, it is painful. So you're going to find people that don't want to merge with you, that reject you, that leave you at the altar, that say, no, thanks. I don't want to, you know, nah, I don't want to do that because they're going to push you back into your South Node. And so you kind of have to uh, find your way through a lot of rejection. And the reason why you get rejection is because the challenge, right? Your North Node is your challenge. The challenge is bonding. Um, the Stallioness says, this sounds like me and I'm a Libra sun and a lot of Libra in my chart. Yeah. Alice says, oh my God, that is so true. Um, let's see. Okay, so, okay, Susie's going to help me with what sign or question am I going to do next? Did anybody else? Okay, so I've got some super chats here that I have to answer. Hold on. Um, Gemini in the eighth house. Okay, so, 
oh my gosh, Gemini in the eighth house. That's so sweet. I don't know who sent me that, but she sent me 3,900 CLPs, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Um, it doesn't matter. Every little bit helps and you support my beautiful channel and I can do more of these videos because of my super supporters and my super chatters. Um, Natalia. Okay, Gemini. So let me do Gemini. And um, uh, I also wanted to just say about Libra, you know, Libra is so funny because it's also here to learn serenity in a way because it's a Venus sign, right? And it has to step out of its Mars angry energy and into the Venetian energy. And the Venetian energy is um, really, really interesting because it is about love, but it isn't sexual love. Um, in your last lifetime, you had all kinds of sexual love. Um, and in this lifetime, you're probably alluring magnetically here. And I want to... I want to read my notes because I put some deeper thoughts down. Um, now, this is really interesting. Um, the North Node in Gemini person is here to, you know, this is on the teacher-student access, is here to really learn and grow through learning. Um, and I also feel like, so the people here, is, some examples are Maya Angelou, David Bowie, um, um, Steven Spielberg, Oliver Stone, Vincent Van Gogh, um, Bob Fosse, George W. Bush, um, Jack Kevorkian. And so this is really interesting. Um, I think what I would say for Gemini North Node is to kind of get a little bit serious about life, like really build a game plan that works um, and not just be in the dream of life, not just be um, sort of in the non-committal, adventurous spirit, but to really hone in and to master or learn a trade, learn a skill set to become curious about life and to learn the art of communication, the art of learning, like learn how to learn, which is an interesting thing uh, because we think all people just pick up a book and start learning. No, <laughs> there's a process to learn. So developing processes to advance your life, developing smart processes or process Two, so let's just say you have all the ingredients to bake your cake, but you have no instructions, right? Um, and you probably could mix the ingredients and do it, but it's building the instruction manual for your life. Um, it's stepping into your ability to communicate and express those ideas, um, to become an incredible learner. Uh, you probably already have a gift for gab. And so in this lifetime, you're really supposed to learn the art of listening, which is quite fascinating. And I think that the art of talking is probably easier for you than the art of listening. But um, I also want to say that there's a sense of youthfulness and play with this aspect. So these people, Gemini North Node, let me write it down that I'm doing Gemini. Gemini North Node people um, kind of get younger as they get older, to tell you the truth. They are the fountain of youth. Um, to really master knowledge, if you will, to learn as much as you can about life and to build pragmatic systems into play, to master, um, to master knowledge. And, and when I say to put it in a process that is workable, I really mean like high functioning, becoming really high functioning with your skill set. Um, 
And I find that Geminis are really, really misunderstood. Um, they look like they have ADD. They look like they don't know what they want. Um, the problem is, is that they cultivate options. And so being willing to take risks with your mind be and your, and your communication. So write a book, give a speech, talk in front of a group, sing a song, become a singer, right? Taking risks with your voice, taking risks with your knowledge, taking risks by stating your opinions, by speaking up, by leading a crowd with your voice. That's one of the big things you are here to learn. And you're also here to learn literally how to talk. <laughs> um, and in your past life, you probably, uh, um, you, you probably talked, but you may not have had the art of communication down. There is a, I love having my sister here. Aw, everybody say hi to my sister. Her name's Linda Tilson on here. Hi, Lynn. I love that you're here. How sweet of you. Um, what I was gonna say is, <laughs> everyone's saying hi to you. What I was gonna say is, is I find that Gemini North Node people oftentimes are like book whores. <laughs> forgive me, but they will sell their body for a good book. Um, they, they really um, get addicted to knowledge. So this is also in advancing your mind, but it's in a different way. Um, and it's sort of to showcase your knowledge in this lifetime. Um, and it isn't necessarily to be in search of the Holy Grail. It's more like to learn your truths and share them through communication and also partnership. This is a really uh, busy lifetime. Um, you're not supposed to be indolent in this lifetime. You are supposed to be almost neurotically busy learning as much as you can about life and the pragmatics of life, the operations of life, and how to build your systems and, struct and structures to advance life. There, there's something about this placement also that is here to master technology going forward. And the old books of astrology have so many like archaic truths. And so I like to take astrology and apply it to modern day terms. So I want to tell Gemini North Nodes, one of the things you will do is you will break boundaries with your mind. So you are here to advance um, partnerships, connections with other people. You are the networker. Uh, you are here to advance them through technology and through the power of the mind and through communication. And so you can have no dumb job and be happy. Does this make sense? You are here as the Rubik's cube of the Zodiac and to network with people. Now, I will tell you guys, I think the easiest nodal access to have is Gemini Sagittarius. I really do. I also think it is the easiest opposition to have. So, um, so I think this will be a fairly easy placement. I don't think that a Gemini North Node person is going to have the kind of trauma and struggle that a Taurus North Node person will have. Okay, so Andrea, are you a Gemini North Node? Because that's so fabulous. Or are you a Gemini South Node? I am a medically retired registered nurse. However, I want to master Reiki. That's very Gemini right there. Um, okay, so. Okay, good. You guys are talking to me about the Gemini. Yeah, I'm not going in order. I'm answering my super chats because you guys are so stinking sweet. Okay, who do I have now? Hold on one second. I didn't want to do the houses until I do the signs, so forgive me for that. Um, let's see. This person says, okay, I just did my Libra, so Alice sent me $5. Thank you, Alice, and I'll go back if I can and do the house. 
and North Node and Aries in the 12th house also have Jupiter and Mars in the 12th house. That was Karen. Okay, and I already did my Aries. So is there another super chat here? Does anybody want to send me a super chat for my next house? Oh, here's one, Capricorn. Can you talk about North Node and Capricorn in the 10th? Thank you. Okay, I'll go back to the houses but um, at the end here, but let me do Capricorn. Um, so Capricorn is very interesting. Um, let me just make sure. And I don't, I'm not getting to read all my comments. I, I wish I could, um, but I can't do, I can't do it all. Um, so you know, um, I'll tell you that this is a very interesting placement because they all are. And this is not necessarily an easy placement. Um, this is kind of a tough one again. And that's because they're coming from cancer. So um, I'll tell you these people are really here to toughen up get tough, get strong, and um, I kind of also want to say grow up. So, and that's saying it brutally, but to mature and to mature so much that they can stand in their wisdom um, and to let go of their dependencies on others and to build something that is so powerful and so strong that it outlasts their own lifetime. So this is a power placement. If you have this, spirit is really asking you to like really level up in your life and to basically get out of the womb, you know, get out of all the feel goods and creature comforts and, you know, go, go make the very best version of yourself that you can. This is sort of the rite of passage. Do you guys know what I mean? That's when a little girl wakes up and she discovers that she's a woman, a young woman. And now all these young woman lessons are happening to her and she's no longer a little girl. So that's what this nodal axis is all about. And it is strenuous. And so you're going to find yourself in situations that try to hold you back or hold you down or create codependency or treat, cre treat you like uh, you are little. I'll tell, I'm not a North Node in Capricorn, but I'll just give you a, an example. So when I was like 28 years old, I moved to Augusta, Georgia um, in the South in the United States. You guys probably know about Georgia. Um, and I have a lot of people from Georgia on here, so maybe you'll understand but I was, you know, I had lived in New York City already for three years and I had lived around the world. I, I already had a fairly cosmopolitan lifestyle after college because of my dad living on the other side of the world. And um, I understood cultures and I by no means was a sheltered person, um, uh, although I was before, before um, probably the age of 14. However, saying that, by the time I got to Georgia, the men there literally called me Little Missy. And I was like, what? What? And they're like, what do you want, Little Missy? And I've, I'm thinking, this is not for real. Like, is this for friggin' real? So I was trying to run a ballet company and I was um, an administrative director wanting to become an executive director, but I was only 28, so I was really young. Um, but I already had three years of badass New York in me. So this was just mind blowing to me. So this is that example where you might be in a culture where people try to hold you down or they think less of you um, or they don't see you in that executive director of your life. They don't see you in your legacy. They don't see you in your greatness and they talk to you like that. And so... Um, Yeah, this is a very, this can be a very high vibration um, uh, placement, but you have to pull yourself out of your comfort zone all the time. And so life, I just want to be honest with you, 
can be uncomfortable because what greatness was built out of comfort? Nothing. Nobody comfortable ever really made anything great. So let me give you some examples of this. Um, Woody Allen, look how uncomfortable his life. <laughs> and I think he's sick, but um, every movie he's ever done just has so much of um, overcoming the odds. Julie Andrews, gosh, you know, she just blew out her vocal cords and could never sing again. Um, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, the great poet, Al Capone, Walter Cronkite, Ronnie Howard, he's great from Happy Days. Now he's a brilliant director. Um, he works his butt off, that, that man. Buddy Holly, um, Indira Gandhi. Uh, did I say Al Capone? I think I did. John F. Kennedy, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, John McCain, um, Jerry Seinfeld, Oprah, Andrew Wyeth. Oh, I think I gave Oprah credit on another one, but she's really on this one. Denzel Washington, Robert Redford. Oh, my gosh. Duke Ellington, John Travolta. Um, I mean, those people, all of them have left an unbelievable legacy. And many of them have left a legacy that has outlived their time. So if you are Capricorn North Node, my God, you have such a mission. And I really recommend that you get a reading because this, if you're a Taurus North Node or a Capricorn North Node, I really recommend you get a reading and everybody should. But to understand like, what is expected of me? What legacy am I supposed to leave behind? Because it's no small mission. Um, there's a toughening up. And this, this also is going to ask you to become the wise man or the wise woman, the guru, the oracle in your life, where people will seek out your experience, your wisdom, your advice. Um, okay, so I hope that's good. You have three more super chats. Um Hold on. One secky. I have to write to my person who's helping me with my super chats. That would be Susie Girl. Um, okay, hold on. She's telling me to hurry it up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so I've got cancer to do next, right? Okay, so if you have your... Um, if you have your North Node in Cancer, this is the opposite, right, of what I just talked about. Um, and you're coming from a life of exhaustion. You're coming from a life where you really probably <laughs> outdid yourself. And um, you may have even gotten destroyed by it. I mean, South Node in Capricorn, you probably were a workaholic. And I'll just tell you that this is a placement of deep, deep transformative healing. Um, and this is a lifetime where you are supposed to learn the depths of love. And when I say love, I mean like a mother's love for a child. Now, you might not be a mother, but that kind of love, nourishing love, you need nourishment. And um, you are supposed to learn to feel and learn to cry and learn what heartbreak is and learn what joy is and learn the gamut of emotions and get out of the workaholic tendency, the tendency to be overly independent, building your empire, building, you know, building your monumental legacy and learn to just be. Learn that playing jacks on your kitchen floor with your kid or your best friend and having your loyal dog next to your side um, is one of the best things in life and may be the entire meaning of life. And learning that simplicity, 
learning that depth of love, learning to step into the emotional arena, learning to master your emotions, learning to have emotions, learning how to operate your intuition, learning the importance of intuition. Not everything is a mathematical equation that's going to work towards the bottom line. Sometimes we don't work towards the bottom line. So this is about healing. This is about true healing. And this is also about bringing healing to your family. Your family might have um, suffering and you might become the healer in this lifetime. So this is a very poignant place. And this is a hard place. Um, you will also um, feel maybe you might come into this lifetime and become very, very sensitive as you get older. You might be one of those people that, you know, was kind of hard and tough in your younger years and you became an old softy um, because it takes time to really understand the power of emotions, the gift of emotions, how to navigate emotions. Um, it's, it can be painful. Um, and so you will have situations in this lifetime that will do what? <laughs> Get you emotional, right? I hope you can relate to that. Um, okay, so a segue, Jody Ann says, I have a question. You said that north nodes are hard to do, but what if your sun sign is the same as your north node? That's a really, really great question. And that tells me that... Um, <laughs> you kind of got the cliff notes, right? Spirit thought that, wow, you better be able to do this North Node. We want you to do this North Node so badly that we're going to give you a ton of support. We're going to let you cheat on the exam. Not really, but you get to have an open, you know, you get to have a, what did my daughter say? She said, this was an open notes, an open notes final exam, mom. And I'm like, are you sure? I don't know too many teachers that do that. And she's like, it is. So you kind of get the cliff notes, right? So you will find that doing, I pray that doing your North Node is a lot easier than somebody who has no support for their North Node. Okay, let me just see. Um, do I have, oh, Crucio Diablo, welcome, a new super supporter. I want you guys all to be super supporters. You get so many perks. Go check it out. I don't know if Susie can link up uh, where you where you go to join, but you just hit the join channel on the join button on my channel at Soul Navigation, and um, you can become a super super supporter, and you get so many things. Go learn all about it. I'm so glad. Welcome. Okay, so I think. I need to do Pisces now. Is that right? Pisces and then Leo. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 Susie's like, hurry it up, girl. Okay. I know she's good for me. So Pisces, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Ah, stay with me. Okay. So, um, with, Pisces North Node, you know, this is also a little, this is really similar to the cancer, but it's at a much bigger level. And I'll tell you that when you are a Pisces North Node, you are so highly efficient. You are so good at having mastered your last lifetime that you probably were in a servant's role. And um, you probably served mankind. You probably served people. You might have been a slave. You might have been a servant. I'm so grateful for all the super chats. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to them all, though. So just forgive me if I can't give to yours. I have good intentions. But um, uh, I have so many things I have to do tonight. So I just want to tell you that this is... Um, Wow, this, when you try on the pain of this, it, 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 it too can really make you cry. With this placement, these, these people came from a belief system that they had to earn love, that they were not good enough. They came in with a deep humility that um, they had to be perfect. Um, they had to serve somebody in order to be lovable or in order to be worth 
anything. And so they come in with an overzealousness to serve uh, others, to fix others, to help others, to assist others. And they almost don't know who they are uh, when they are not in servitude for some cause or for someone else. And so they ended up, a lot of them, sacrificing their own vision to do or to facilitate another person's vision, somebody who was on top of them. And so in this lifetime, they are truly supposed to know what their vision is for life and to serve humanity in a larger, more global way, not in a slavery type of way. So I'm not coming over to, you know, I'm not doing your laundry necessarily, but maybe I'm figuring out a way to help people who, um, you know, cannot find food to help the homeless, to help the hungry. So the causes of servitude are at the global level. They're not at the, you know, I'm in service to you here. Let me help you get dressed. Let me brush your hair, <laughs> right? And um, I'll also say that it's really important. Hold on one second. My family's home. <laughs> It's very rare for me to be able to be alone for two hours in this house. <laughs> Is your house like that too? <laughs> yeah, it's like, forget it. Um, no, can never be alone. Yeah, now they're all going to be wanting me to make dinner for them. <laughs> but I also want to say that there's a suffering in this um, nodal access too. And the suffering comes from um, the Pisces North Node person had to sacrifice themselves in a way that they did not want to, in a way that hurt them, in a way that crushed their identity. So this is a placement where you are supposed to know that your gifts, your talents, your love is healing love. And you don't need to be in service to be loved. You don't need to be a slave to someone else. You don't need to do another person's vision. And for you to step into the empowerment of your own soul's purpose in life, um, and it might be hard to define it because this, this nodal axis, it's very hard to define what am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to do? Um, and um, I want to say that this is extraordinarily karmic. This, this lifetime is very karmic and you want to get this right. So you came from a lifetime, you came from lifetimes of great suffering. You probably never even got the recognition uh, that you deserved, or you probably never got paid your rightful amount of money. And so there's deep insecurities. So stepping into the full blown power of your goodness, knowing that you don't need to do a damn thing in order to be good. You don't have to earn it. Uh, yeah, exactly. It is kind of a Downton Abbey type of thing. Um, and um, I was reading some of your comments, so which are really, really good. And I want to be a part of the conversation, but um, I want to talk to you too. And I just want to say that you're going to, in this lifetime, hopefully learn or see or experience that there is a universal divine love and you are a recipient of that divine love and to know and to learn and to grow um, and to discover the worth of your existence. It is so important. And how your love, your time, your effort, your energy, your kindness um, has a ripple effect. You know how Sagittarius is um, about humanity. Well, this is about infinity. So learning about the infinite love, the infinite divine love, the infinite essence and who you are in the cosmology of the universe um, is really 
where your soul wants to go. Understanding the life here on earth and the life out there in God's world and understanding that the two are interconnected and letting go of the servitude of the mundane world and the paralysis that brought you because you discovered you were really not perfect, right? Oh my, oh my God, did you know you were not perfect? Wow, yeah, and the devastation of that and the destruction that that belief system created to surrender to the fact that in fact, you are infinitely perfect. And to understand the infinity of the soul's journey, the infinite journey of the soul. So this one's massive. I, I wish I had five hours to talk about just this one. Does anybody with a North Node in Pisces even relate to me remotely? Um, so Jennifer M, Pisces in my North Node in my fourth house, so the healer, Everything I just said about the cancer um, north node, mix that with this. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to do. Oh, thank you, Dawn. She says, I love the depth. Yeah, I, I'm not doing light, lighthearted memes. Um, okay, which sign do I have next, Susie? Um, let me look at Susie. So I do think, and Susie can say it, I think I need to do a part two where I go through the houses. Is everybody okay with that? I might be able to do that in two weeks or three weeks. Um, <laughs> Bethany, uh, you're so cute. Um, you are a sweetheart. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, good. Oh, Pisces North Node in the first half house bethany says yeah and i want you to know the north node in pisces people you're going to be massively lost so if you get this before age 36 years old i will be shell-shocked it's like please come be my best friend if you have all the answers to all you know all the meanings of life all the answers to all the meanings of the infinite life of the soul before the age of 36 you know please come be my best friend because i would love to have a chardonnay with you out on my patio but um you know, I, I'm just saying that th this one's hard because how do you define the infinite? How do you define infinite love? You know, just that assignment, just take that homework assignment and just do that one thing. And, and, and you have that, but on all levels of the evolution of the soul. So Pisces North Node people really came here to do serious advanced work. Um, Yeah, I might need to do a part two. So Susie has to step away just for a minute. So I'm going to try to carry this show on all by myself. Ah! Um, and Susie, you go take care of the things that you need to take care of and just come back if you can. Don't worry about me. I'm a big girl. I'll be able to do it. And look at all this love I have on this channel. You guys will help me. Um, um, okay, hold on. Let me just see what I got. Okay, you guys, hang on. Hang on. I have to see where I'm at. Okay, so I just did Pisces. Okay, um, now I'll do North Node and Scorpio because somebody, I don't know who it was, so I can't thank you personally. Um, somebody sent me a super chat. Thank you. Thank you for all my super chats. And if I didn't answer your question, you sent me a super chat. Please know I'm not trying to be selfish. I just want I just want this video to actually mean something. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. And then I have to do, I have to do Aquarius still. And which one am I missing? Virgo. Okay. Um Um, okay, hold on one second. Let me just look at something. Okay, hold on one second. I just want to look at something on my chart here. Okay, so I'm going to do Scorpio now. North Node in Scorpio. And Dot Pop says, do you prefer sidereal or tropical? I'm not sure which one to use. I use tropical. 
uh, just to let you know. And I'm not a Vedic astrologer, by the way. I don't know anything about Vedic astrology. When they start talking mansions, I'm like, can I move into one? Um, I have no idea what that is. Okay, so yeah, we're going to do Scorpio. Um, hold on. Oh, Meg says, these are the best North Node in signs interpretations. Thank you. I, I wanted to modernize it. I want to make it relevant. Just like human beings advance, you know, astrology needs to advance too. So North Node in um, Scorpio. So I like North Node in Scorpio better than I like North Node in Taurus. Um, and that's just my preference. But, you know, who am I? Who am I? I'm not saying you have anything bad, but I just I think it's a little bit easier um, so Scorpio, um, it's really, it, this is very, a very complex placement in a way. Um, so, you know, this is about becoming so psychologically courageous. Um, this is about literally stepping into or having the willingness or the guts to step into the goriest parts of life, the uncomfortable, the raw, the gritty, the sick, the twisted, the dirty, the mucky, the murky, you know, stepping literally into kind of the psychological horror show of mankind. And this is somebody who uh, probably had a, a serenity in their life, and now they are in a lifetime that will bring them far more drama and chaos. So they are here to learn their own personal power. They are here to learn a deep... Uh, ability to become shrewd and cunning in a way cunning almost like the ability to 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 understand the shadow side of humanity so deeply that when they bump into it they get your game do you know what i mean to develop the the no bs radar to sort of uh be able to see what is not right, morally, ethically, um, humanely, um, and to learn the art of discernment between good and evil and be willing to wrestle with evil if necessary. So what are these people going to get, right? All that in a bag of chips. Um, and uh, to understand mental illness, psychological illness, to understand what it means to be sociopathic or psychopathic, to understand mental disease. So they're going to be working with people who bring that to their lives, um, either clinically and professionally or personally. But um, also they're going to deal with mental chaos in a way that they've never dealt with it before. So what I mean is um, in their past life, they probably got everything very stable and, and, and working properly. Uh, stable, calm, serene. They probably got their operation, you know, food, bread, water, shelter, pay my bills you know, ride my bike to work, yeah, cook my dinner, da, 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 the, like the routine of life. And with the Scorpio North Node, they have to realize that, <laughs> that that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that's really not uh, like the leave it to beaver or the, the normal is no longer normal. And so understanding the complexity of human of of mankind. So I told this story one time where my dad uh, talked to me about. I was a young girl, you know. Do I think prostitution should be legalized? Well, this is Scorpio. This is a Scorpio North Node question, 
And um, I said, no, absolutely not. I don't think it should be. And he built a case like a good Gemini would for why prostitution should be legalized and all the benefits that it would lend. And so I was like, absolutely not, right? Well, I'm not a Scorpio North node. This is just an example of <laughs> the what's going to happen to a Scorpio North node person pretty much on a daily basis. Well, all of a sudden, he just gave me a very rich, a very deep, and a very complex psychological problem I now have because this conflicts with my morals uh, or what I believe in, my belief systems. But he's not wrong. Because now he can bring this wellness and this health. Um, and he talked about how prostitution is the oldest, it is the oldest form of work in mankind. So now all of a sudden, I'm not saying if you, if you should, I'm not saying tell me if it should or should not be legalized. What I am saying is, do you understand now the complexity of the problem he just gave me? That's Scorpio North Node. So in their last lifetime, Scorpio North Node was just like, it should be illegal or it should be legal. And in this lifetime, they are going to wrestle with the beast of, wait a minute, it doesn't necessarily mean you are a bad person if you are a sex worker. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're immoral. You just may not have any other options in your life. And it doesn't necessarily mean this, and it doesn't necessarily, and so the complexity of the, of the, the complexity of man. And so understanding and being willing to live in that gray matter and, and dissecting it um, is Scorpio North Node. And it takes a lot of courage a lot of courage to be able to do this. Do I have Scorpio North nodes who get this? Do you get this? I hope you get this. Um, it's being able to understand that answers are not simple. No good answer is going to be simple. So a Scorpio North Node, I would love to challenge you to solve the world's homeless problem, right? Now, in your past life, you would have just said, round them all up and put them in a, I don't know what, uh, put them in their own community and send food. Um, the Scorpio North Node person realizes, wow, well, it's not a homeless problem. It's a drug problem. Well, it's not a drug problem. It's a love problem. These people were not loved. These people lost their way through love. Wow, it's not even a love problem. It's these, this is an alienation problem. Well, it's an alienation problem because it's a, right? That's Scorpio North Node, the detective and the psychologist. Do you guys get it? Do you guys get it? Do you guys get it? I hope you do. It is very complex. It's moving from the simple food, bread, water, shelter, serenity into the deepest, darkest complexity, the conflict that lives inside of each of us. Um, how many people feel, I'm married, I love my spouse. Wow, I want to have sex with somebody else, right? So the Scorpio understands without punishment how those two feelings can exist inside of one person. I'm not saying to comment on the problems. I'm just stating to you that Scorpio is going to deal with the goriest parts of life. Do you guys get this? Do you guys get this? Please tell me you get this. Um, I hope you do. Yeah. Okay. Uncle Dan is here. How's my uncle? I don't have any uncles. You're my only uncle. Uncle Dan's my only uncle gonna meet Uncle Dan one day. Don't even know where he lives, but I'm going to. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna do, oh, I'm gonna do my Aquarius next, okay? I'm gonna do my Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is very fascinating. Um, how do I say, how do I say, like, this is really, really deep, but Moving away from 
how does this affect me into how does this affect you is one example. Um, and I also want to tell you guys, when you go listen to, you know, the nodes through the signs um, on other channels, if there are any other videos or in books, use this as a supplement to that because those aren't wrong. I'm just going way beyond what the stereotype things say. I like to do that. Um, so let me just tell you. In, in the Aquarius North Node's past life, they experienced themselves as being extraordinary, as being regal, and as kind of having it all. They were kind of considered a god. They got doors open for them. They probably, you know, materially hit it off. Um, and they probably liked all of the trappings of the material world. And in this lifetime, they are going to evolve so beyond that, where it's not about, oh, if I'm the queen, um, then I succeed at life. No, it's about understanding the truth of collaboration between all people and understanding that I am only um, as good as we are. And so mastering the collective and stepping out of stepping out of um, the me, stepping out of my money, my status, my power, my beauty, myself. Um, they mastered themselves in the last lifetime and now here they are here to help raise the vibration up for the collective. And letting go of, um, truly letting go of, and this is massive, of needing to be liked, um, and instead just wanting to be respected. So there's a trap with money and there's a trap with being perfect. Um, and this is a different kind of perfect that Leo has. It's different than Virgo. Um, but the Aquarius North Node learns that other people's opinions of them do not shape their psyche, do not create their importance. As a matter of fact, it's hollow and it's vacant. Um, so in, um, how do I say this? In the process of developing the North Node in Aquarius, it will feel kind of lonely. And I want you Aquarius North Nodes to talk to me if, if you tell me if you if you understand this. And it's because there will be a true disappointment in other people and in other people's opinions about you. You will be misunderstood. Um, you probably will be criticized. And it's, there's going to be an, a, a process of autonomy where you come to learn, you come in this lifetime to learn to value your own belief system and that your moral compass is your better guide, not the opinions of others. And this is a painful, painful process. Um, Catalina, I don't understand your question. Uh, oh, in the goal, what is the goal of the Scorpio North Node? To understand the depth of mankind, to understand the shadow side of mankind, to understand and have compassion for man, you know, the psychology of man, the wound. Scorpio North Node will help I guess the ultimate goal is without judgment, Scorpio North Node will uh, be able to transform others through great compassion of understanding their shadow sides. Yeah. Okay, so back to the Aquarius rising. Um, Aquarius rising, I mean, not Aquarius rising, Aquarius North Node. I'm sorry, I'm reading too many comments. Oh my God, so many comments. Um, Aquarius North Node is going to eliminate themselves from people's projections of them. And they're going to um, be shaped by 
a different kind of success, a success that doesn't come with entrapment. So uh, in their past life, they found success came with traps. And in this lifetime, they are here to experience autonomy, separation from being bought out by another, uh, separation from other people's opinions. And I guess I would say the essence of pure freedom and liberation. And so they lend their gifts to um, help liberate others. And they are on the mission of freedom and liberation from entrapments, from fakery, from um, chasing the gold when the gold isn't even the goal, right? So there is a divine love with this aspect too. When you meet a North Node in Aquarius, this person probably will not run an agenda on you because they value um, enlightenment, the process of enlightenment through freedom, freedom of expression, freedom from entrapments. Does anybody have a North Node? Mm. Dr. Watson does. Okay, great. So Michelle, hi, Michelle. Um, so Michelle probably understands this. And also Aquarius North Node people are here to honestly like heal the earth, um, help the earth and help the planet and help humankind. Um, uh advance. And so they really are here to put us on a faster trajectory, getting us out of old belief systems that that have us entrapped or have us have us sort of enslaved and entrapped to things that don't really matter. Like for example, vanity. Um, it doesn't really matter how beautiful I am. For example, friendships. It doesn't matter how many friends I have. Um, it's sort of to get us out of the keeping up with the Joneses, like having as much money as you have, having the mansion in the sky, having the nice car, having the glittery gold in my life. So Aquarius North nodes have so much integri integrity and they are here to really live a life without this fakery. Um, my energy is dwindling and I have to do my um, Virgo. And then I think I have to do Leo. Um, Samantha, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to you, but I hope you guys get this. Um, always Aqua, thank you. She says this, um, this, uh, my husband wants me. He's calling me now. <laughs> Everybody wants a piece of me <laughs> and my family. My daughter's calling me. Can you drive me to my friends? My husband's like, probably. I'm at the store. Do you want me to pick up some dinner? I got my dog walker. Like, Meredith. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. I'm in here all by myself talking to you guys. Um, let me just see. Um... Oh, you guys are so cute. Oh, if, if you're watching this in replay, I really recommend you go back and watch this live chat and watch the live chat while I talk because the comments are so wonderful. I love, love, love. Yeah, Dishappy Me, you're perfect. And your name is fantastic for a Scorpio North Node. People are beautifully ugly. That's also really good for the Aquarius North Node. Um, Yeah, Jennifer, you get me. Okay, so let me do my, I think you only have Leo and Virgo left. Let's see. Yes. Okay, I'm going to do my Virgo. Okay, um, I'm going to do my North Node and Virgo. So my North Node and Virgo people, it's, uh, this one's very interesting because it's sort of like you need to uh, come down to earth like literally come down to earth. And um, it, 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 this isn't easy to do, like to concretize, to concretize your belief system. 
So all that you believe in, all the magic that you believe in, you, you are here to become a powerful manifester in the concrete world and to really put your belief system into service. Now, not in a way where you like completely lose yourself. Um, I want to tell you that in your last lifetime, you probably completely lost yourself you probably melted away into the ethers um, through escapism, through fantasy, through not wanting to face reality, through being uh, uh, in la-la land, not being pragmatic enough to, you know, maybe you wanted to be, uh, I don't know, uh, in a job that just didn't earn any money. And so you were poor. Maybe you were homeless. Maybe you were without home. Maybe you were without friendships. Maybe you were without self. Um, and so there was a delusion of self, a loss of self, and it's very sad. I mean, if you've ever met anybody who maybe you lost slowly over time to drug addiction, it is the saddest thing because it is an erosion of self. Now, you didn't have to have a drug, drug addiction in order for this to happen, but it could be likely. So anybody who has a North Node in Virgo, I want you to tell me if you can relate to this. Um, but... Um, in this lifetime, you have a soul contract to not only come down to earth, but to be down to earth, to be in the earth, on the earth in a highly functional way, um, operating or implementing systems and structures that are highly efficient um, where you become highly capable to the point of, are you ready for this? Nobody talks about Virgo or the sixth house this way. To be capable of true and decent and deep self-mastery. To master your craft, to put that craft, that technique, that skill set into the world and to help people, animals, life or the earth move forward, advance, to lend your skills, first to create your skill set, then to lend it, maybe even teach it. This is the house also of the mentor, eventual mentor, and to help serve others and to have your craft, your technique, your systems, your structures, your model, your personality, your person, be of use in real time in this lifetime here on earth as we share this space together for a mere 50 to 100 years, hopefully. So how can I help you, Meredith, make this room, this camera, this time functional so you can get out your esoteric messages of infinite divine love out in a pragmatic way to the world, right? If it's not pragmatic, there's no vehicle. So Virgo North nodes become the vehicle in many, in many ways to ideas or to people or to systems. Um, Marie Curry had this placement and didn't she do it? Um, Salvador Dali, you know, literally taking his art and his craft and helping advance what it means to uh, what an artist means or what art means. Um, Muhammad Ali advanced his craft, advanced his technique. Oftentimes Virgo North Node people will also do something that uses their hands. Um, Christian Dior, advanced fashion. Emily Dickinson, advanced, <laughs> advanced writing like nobody else. Charles Dickens, the same thing. Bob Dylan, there is no, there is no better, you know, songwriter, writer, poet than Bob Dylan. Um, Leo Buscaglia literally took uh, the concept of I love you and put it into a pragmatic, practical approach like Tony Robbins back in the day, though, and served it up to people all around the world and changed life. Um, Luther uh, Burbank, Luther Burbank. Um, my God, Joseph Campbell. Um, those are the some examples. Oh, there's more. Cary Grant, Henry Fonda, Garrison Keillor, 
Barbara Streisand, Kurt Vonnegut, um, Frank Lloyd Wright, Twyla Tharp, Percy Bysshe Shelley. I mean, all these people advanced the world in a really pragmatic, practical, concrete way. Use A lot of them using their hands and their minds. This is a smarty pants placement. So this is for you to step into your intelligence to your, your intelligence to be able to create something that benefits others. And you probably through great work, um, doing great daily work or great daily routine will become a mentor. And to master yourself, master your craft. Um, Virgo is the sign of the boxer. I think it's also the sign of the massage therapist. It's the sign of anything using your hands. It's the sign of the potter, the artist. Um, um, let's see. Leo is next. Yes. Okay. Let's do Leo. And, um, I want to know who has Leo North Node. Um, Leo North Node is really kind of a more fun placement. And isn't it interesting that just because I love... <laughs> I, I like, you know, moving in one direction better than I like moving in another direction, right? So I think it's, um, I don't know, I would rather move into a Leo North node than I would, uh, I guess I think it would be easier, and, and maybe that's just because of the placements in my chart, but I think it might be easier to do Leo North node than Aquarius North node. Um I have to, my lips are so dry and this has a little cinnamon on it. Um, so um, I'm going to give you some examples of people in a, in a minute, but So when I think of this placement, I want to tell you that these people have suffered such deep um, isolation and alienation that it's to the point that they feel or they felt in a previous lifetime unrelatable, unlikable, and unlovable. And they are here to learn the vulnerability and the euphoria of what it means to love and to be loved, to connect with others. Um, and one of the ways in which they will find love is to be authentically themselves, to learn who they authentically are, to have an opinion about my own self and to put myself out there fully self-expressed. And to... Um, Yes, thanks, Dawn. I appreciate you. Gosh, be my be my moderator. I love you so much. I'm going to do a part two through the houses because this was just too big. I thought I could do it all. Of course I did, right? Um, but this is also a person who realizes that their unique self-expression is... Um, critical because it is the mere essence of who you are and they have to learn to not hide hide their emotions hide their feelings hide their preferences and hide their uniquely uh their unique version of themselves this is also a calling to step into the arts um, finding or cultivating your artistic expression. And it might be just the way that you dress, the way you decorate your room, or it could literally be singer, dancer, performer in some way. This is, in this lifetime, you are being called to, how do I say this, to, to become powerful inside your own tribe, whatever your tribe is. It usually means family. But if you think about the lion, he is there as the protector and as the um, ruler of his clan or tribe or family. And so this has a leadership emphasis where you're not supposed to just hide in um, a collaborative group, but you are supposed to lead 
the charge lead the way, usually creatively, but I really want to say through the power and the expression of generosity and love. So this is also um, um, a person who um, in previous lifetimes was maybe a miser, a miser with their energy, a miser with their emotions, a miser with their expression. They um, held back. They held back their um, emotional or creative expressions. They held it within or they were disconnected from it. So it wasn't that necessarily that they chose to be that way. It's that life did not, um, life was not safe to express oneself or it was not safe to show you my unique me. What if there is something so unique about me? Like what if 23 years ago, I'm an astrologer when it really is not a cool thing to be and people think it's terrible. And you're a what? You do what? And the Leo North Node, I don't have this place, and I'm just giving you an example. The Leo North Node has to find the courage, the guts to (laughs) show their how they are different, how they are unique. They have to own their uniqueness um, through great strength, through pride through having pride. Do you know I hid what I did for a living and I was very successful at it. I was successful in my astrology career in my first year and I hid what I did for 14 years. I did not tell random people. I didn't, I wasn't on YouTube. I didn't tell random people what I did and I had enough business just privately that I didn't need to. And when I went out on a date, I certainly One time I went out on a date and we were walking into a dinner party and I made my boyfriend tell the whole group that I was a tax accountant, not knowing a damn thing about tax accounting. But I knew if I said, oh, I'm a tax accountant, nobody would ask me about myself. But really, I was an astrologer and um, he he was a Scorpio. He didn't lie very well, but he told everybody I was a tax accountant. They were like, oh, really? Do you work for yourself? Yeah, I work for myself. Oh, okay, cool. And the conversation ended there. (laughs) But I say I'm astrologer. Everybody wants to know. I'm just saying that's Leo North Node. I'm not a Leo North Node. But where if you're gay, having the courage to, with love, come out, right? So to lead with love, to learn the power of love, to learn the power of generosity towards other people, to learn the power of being generous with self, in the sense of being having pride, developing pride in who you are and not alienating and hiding and disconnecting from all of those things. Does this make sense? <laughs> Jan at Don Emerson. We all think Woody Allen is sick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love Jan. She's hilarious. Um, I'm a Leo North Node and I'm a singer. Oh my God. I thought we were going in order, the spiritual voyeur. (laughs) No, you were not being a voyeur. (laughs) We weren't. You know what I did? I went in super chat order because people are throwing me 10 bucks and I felt like I should accommodate them. Um, Jennifer says, LOL, love that Meredith. Love that Meredith. People did not get it back then. No, they they really didn't. It was very difficult. Even my parents were like, what are you doing exactly? What is that that you're doing? What, what's that, what's that thing that you're doing called? (laughs) That was back in like so long ago. It was like 1998. Um, Yeah, they think you're a witch and then they don't want to go out on a second date. (laughs) It was hard for me to get a second date if I told people what I did. But I, if I liked them, I told them, Um, you know, like soon. Um, You mean like persecution, Patricia says? (laughs) Yeah, actually I do. So allowing yourself to be seen and to shine and, and to be generous with your spirit and really allowing that for other people too. So it's not just about you, but it's, it's giving that, that freedom to others as well, because love goes both ways, right? It's also learning like a self actualization. I would say the Leo North Node is about self-actualization. 
um, where Virgo North Node is about self-mastery, and they're a little bit different. Self-mastery is really mastering that talent and that craft and then putting that in service to others. Where self-actualization is, is, God, I know who I am, and I have pride in who I am, and I share who I am with you. And hopefully that inspires you to be generous with me and share with me. And you know what we just created in that formula? Love. That's what love is. Um, uncle Dan. This is why Uncle Dan, he's my age. I think he's younger than me. He's going to be my uncle. Uh, he says, um, I'm in the circus, Mom. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm in the circus, Mom. I joined the circus. <laughs> Silver Star says, I always view learning to come from the heart and not the head. Yeah, and I think a lot of people do learn that way. Oh my gosh, I have to tell you guys, on Sunday, um, well, did you guys get to see my video on the top three most psychic signs? That was so much fun to do. That was a great video. But um, this Sunday, I'm going to do the top three most intelligent signs and how to find intelligence in your own chart. So we get to figure out if you are a Jack Russell Terrier or a poodle <laughs> or um, a Lopso Opso. <laughs> That's so funny. You guys are so stinking cute. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm gonna head off now, but I just love you. Mm, come tune in 9.30 uh, a.m. Pacific time on my premiere and we're going to look at how to find intelligence in your chart and if you don't have your gorgeous chart oh my god please go buy one you need one because i make it so beautiful for you you can't really see it but it's just gorgeous can you see it yeah you need a gorgeous chart so go to soulnavigation.com and book a reading with my team over um at soulnavigation.com I hope you guys are wonderful. Love you. Bye. Take care. Bye.